David Can here with another question bank question in the style of what you find in your Hayes and Harris Math SL textbook, Chapter 9C.2. And in this question, we're still looking at applications of the sine rule. In fact, we're looking at applications where you need to find the angle and the exceptions that can occur. In this question, we're told about diagrams which represent two triangles. In both triangles, the side AB is 20 centimeters, the side AC is 17 centimeters. In the angle A, B, C is 50 degrees. Knowing that, in part A, we want to calculate the size of the angle A, C, B, A, C, B in triangle 2. So that would be this triangle here. So to find a missing side, well, I know, sorry, to find a missing angle, I know two sides and another angle, so sine rule seems like an appropriate choice. So we'll start with sine rule. Sine rule says that the sine of angle B over side B is equal to the sine of angle C over side C. So in this case, angle B would be 50 degrees so that would be the sine of 50 degrees. And the side opposite to angle B would have a length of 17 centimeters. Meanwhile, angle C is what we want to find. And side C is the side opposite angle C. And that would be 20 centimeters. So to solve for the angle C, we'll multiply 20 to the other side. And we'll get the sine of angle C is equal to 20 times the sine of 50 degrees over 17. 50 degrees is not a major angle on the unit circle, so we'll have to plug that into the calculator to solve, making sure we're in degree mode. And when you do that, you'll find that the sine of angle C should be equal to 0 0.901. To get angle C, we'll take the inverse trigonometric function once again, that's not a major length on the unit circle, so we'll have to turn to the calculator, making sure we're in degree mode, and we'll get 64.3 degrees for angle C. But whenever we use an inverse trigonometric function, we have to remember that there are technically infinite solutions to the function. The calculator, however, will only tell us one solution and will not give us a warning that there are others. And so whenever we use an inverse trigonometric function, we have to use the unit circle to double check and make sure that any of the other solutions don't make more sense. So let's draw a unit circle. We're told that the sine of angle C should be 0 0.901. Sine is, of course, the height on the unit circle. And 0 0.901 is 90% of the way to the top, because it's all the way to 1 at the top. So we're looking for angles which have that component for their height, 0 0.901, and the calculator told us about one of them. It said there was one of them at 64.3 degrees. But the unit circle is telling us about another one. It's over here. We can calculate this angle. That angle ought to be 180 degrees. Take away 64.3 degrees. When we do that, we're going to find 116 degrees to three significant figures. Those are two possible solutions. There are an infinite number of solutions, including 64.3 degrees plus 360 degrees plus another 360 degrees plus another, or subtracting 360 degrees, as well as 116 going around and around and around and around again. However, we know that this angle is meant to represent an angle in a triangle. And the sum of all the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees and ought not to be negative. So we can, all, we can immediately throw away all of the solutions which come from rotating backwards. And we can also throw away all of the solutions which come from rotating forwards because that would put us at more than 360 degrees, which is far too much for a single angle in a triangle. So the only two plausible solutions are these two, 64.3 degrees and 116 degrees. 
Now, which is the correct angle for triangle two? Well, it says the diagram is not to scale, but from the diagram, it's clear that one angle is meant to be acute and one angle is meant to be obtuse. The two solutions we found are for the two triangles, this one being 64.3 degrees and this one being 116 degrees. And so what we can say then is that for triangle two, the angle ACB should be equal to 116 degrees as opposed to 64.3 degrees. Now for part B, it asks us to calculate the area of triangle one. Coming down here for part B, the area of a triangle in general is one half times the product of two of the sides times the sine of the angle between them. We know two sides, so we'll say we know side C and we know side B. What we'll need though is we'll need angle A. So we'll have one half side B times side C times the sine of angle A. To get angle A, we'll just use the fact that it's the third angle in a triangle. We already know two of the three, and the sum of the three should be 180 degrees. So angle A should be 180 degrees, take away the 50 degrees, and the 64 degrees from the other two angles, and we'll find uh, that angle A should be 65.7 degrees. We'll plug all that information into uh, our equation, and we'll find that the area should be equal to one half times side B and side C, that's 20 and 17, times the sine of 65.7 degrees. 65.7 degrees is not a major angle on the unit circle, so we'll have to turn to our calculator in degree mode to solve this. And we'll find that the result is 155, since it's meant to represent an area, and 17 and 20 are both given in centimeters. That's going to be 155 square centimeters for the area.